Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your guest, Inane Dragon, and I'm kidnapping the Drunken Heathen Challenge. Before I get started, I want to thank Drunken Uncle for letting me hijack his channel for a hot second. Thank you, you drunken British booze hound. This video was first proffered from Drunkle to Kind Heathen. If Heathen's covered it already, I'm sure Drunken Uncle will throw a link in the description. I'm horrible at keeping up with my friends' videos. Right, so here's hoping that this bit of ableism won't devolve into kitty rape, because we've had quite enough of that. Take it away, Annie. Hello, hello. It's Let's Talk Tuesday, so let's talk about... About Tuesdays? Nah, funnier when Drunkle does it. He's got a British accent. Casually ableist language. Ableism, specifically casual ableism, is widely accepted in our society. Oh, fuck. This is gonna be one of those things where she talks about some stupid non-issue, isn't it? Like when my mates want some cheap entertainment, so they start throwing the light switch on and off to make me seize. You do know that when people use your disability for their own amusement, they buy the first round, Annie! And pink hair isn't a disability anyways. Particularly when it comes to our language. No wonder most people don't care about access or equality when it comes to people with disabilities if our everyday language perpetuates the idea that they are lesser. Ableism is constantly used to insult others or describe something as negative. And oftentimes, people don't even realize where these words are coming from. What these words mean. Shit. Sorry there. Zoned out a bit. You're kind of boring, Annie. Now here's the thing. People have got Google, right? So I bet they know what words mean, or at least they can figure it out pretty quick. As for where they came from, it's usually their mouth. What people speak with, you know? Oh shit, you're slow, aren't you? I'm being ableist, aren't I? Damn it! So, warning. I'm about to possibly throw out some slurs and otherwise really offensive terms for people with disabilities for sake of example. Trigger warning, ladies and gentlemen, we have our trigger warning! Ah, crap, shouldn't have done that. Forgot the whole seizing thing. First, there's using disabilities as insults. Remember those campaigns to stop saying, that's so gay? Because why are you using homosexuality to express something negative? Okay, so in that same breath of campaigns, creating awareness of harmful language, like the use of the R word, we should have included the word lame. Right! That's pretty gay, retard. And again, I get to claim the oppression stack from you. As an LGBT fella, a disabled person, and I'm pretty lame in literally every sense of the word. Here's the thing, though. Retarded and lame have very real, objective, and often measurable shortcomings relative to the average bloke. So it's not an insult to a retard to call them a retard, and it's not saying the retard's a bad person to use retard as an insult on a normie. Because a retard is someone who is behind the curve, usually with regards to intelligence, someone who's lame can't run so good. So it's an accurate descriptor for someone's joke that they just can't keep up. Their retard has made a lame joke. See how that works? Do you know what lame means? It means someone who can't walk or walks with pain and or difficulty. Ding, 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 ding. Now that was lame, sister. Here's the thing, though. The word also means a naive or inept person. Halting verse. A dull or uninspiring entertainment such as this show. Or, and... I think this is particularly applicable to you, an unconvincing, feeble excuse or explanation. Words, they mean more than one thing. That's why I had to admit I'm lame in every way. After learning the word's true definition, go ahead, look it up for yourself. I promise you, that's what the dictionary will say. It'll also say all those other things I mentioned, you condescending ninny. And I certainly no longer feel comfortable using it in that way. It's very clear that people knew what it meant. And it's very clear you don't. And they started using it to describe things in a negative way. Or 
they used one of its alternate, albeit perhaps related, meanings, and used it correctly and insultingly, whilst having no ill regard for that poor crippled bastard who can't walk good. Now things like the word lame are, for the most part, very unintentional. A lot of people do not know what that word means or where it comes from. But then, another common thing is how people literally use disability in order to insult or condescend to someone. And you aren't being incredibly condescending right now, Missy. Uh, thinking people are too retarded to Google a damn word or have learned it in their middle school English while dissecting Robert Frost poems? You've got to make a video about it, standing up for all those people who maybe literally can't. And frankly, they probably didn't care. The cripples I know can take the English language without running away. What are you, blind? Uh, are you deaf? What is wrong with you? Are you mentally ill? You need help. You seriously need help. Nut job? Psycho? How can you be so stupid? Okay, a lot of those weren't even disabilities. I would like you to check if I need help when my tire is flat, for example, and half of the rest weren't insults. Blind people, they can't see, right? So someone misses something obvious, it's as though they're blind. Same thing, but with hearing shit for those deaf fuckers. Even the psychos I know don't want to be psycho. You really didn't think this through, young lady. But if we are actually blind or visually impaired? Then they're asking the right question, lass. This is need-to-know information. They might have been asking because they stopped your ass from walking in front of a damn truck. Around here, you walk into traffic, you're either blind or part of a BLM riot. What if we are actually deaf or hard of hearing? Then unless you can read lips, you probably didn't even hear me. What if we actually do struggle with mental illness or mental disability? As a fellow with a few problems in monogamy, let me tell you, that's my problem. If I'm doing something that's out of line, that'd make people ask if I'm psycho, I need to calm my ass down. Same goes for anyone else, regardless of how mush their brain is. When one asks such things in this context, when you use this as a way to condescend or insult, you're doing it with implications that a disability makes you less than. Well, within certain contexts, a disabled person is less than. I'm a photosensitive epileptic. I will never be even a mediocre disco dancer. It's breakdancing or bust if you put me in with a strobe light. That lame guy you were talking about earlier, he is literally less capable of running a five kilometer mini marathon than even me. And I'd stop for pizza after the first hundred meters. Psycho with no empathy and limited emotional control? What do you know that fucker's probably a serial killer? Definitely less of a stand-up citizen than Drunkle. And he's got an advanced case of cirrhosis. Then there's using a disability and mental slash chronic illness as an expression. Yeah, I'm super OCD about my books. Oh my god, what the f- <laughs> I'm sorry, I can get so bipolar sometimes. You are so ADD. Even a blind man can see. Diabetes. Again, like your last attempt to insult people who use descriptive language, you are missing the point. These disorders and health problems, they make for accurate descriptions of the extreme case of a fairly regular set of human quirks. So that means they have wonderful words to use for anybody to quickly convey an accurate message. Also, how do you know she's not actually OCD and it manifests in her book ordering practices? Did you just shame someone for their disability, you ableist? You did, didn't you? As the most oppressed person still listening to you, I take offense on behalf of the whole community. See how dumb this is yet? Appropriating language from sick and disabled communities is harmful. People do not own words. They don't. And normal people came up with most of these words to describe the disabled guns. So, if anyone could own them, it'd be the normies. I'm appropriating epilepsy every time I talk about it. People get electroshock therapy for that shit. Saying things like that diminishes what those words really mean. No, it reinforces what those words mean, as anyone with a quarter of functioning brain understands the difference between a literal use and a figurative one. Oh crap, you're a cripple, aren't you? 
You, this video is really about you feeling shitty because you're missing three quarters of your gray matter, ain't it? And it makes it harder for people who actually deal with these disorders and illnesses to openly discuss them and be taken seriously. You've got things backwards again, Quarter Brain! The worst thing I've experienced with my disability is people who can't fucking laugh about it. When people are always serious and always cautious about their language, they shut up. They get uncomfortable and don't talk about it, even in an honest or polite way. The conversation dies before it can even begin and you're trapped, alone, different, and having no fucking idea what people are really thinking about you. Happiest I ever saw my friend with a stutter was when another friend on first meeting him asked, Hey, don't you, you know, how, how, how to talk n n normal? The peals of laughter were a gateway to the, both of them talking about his stutter, why he had it, and all the uptight bitches who refused to give him the same shit talk they'd give anyone else. Yes, there can be assholes who maliciously torment someone by drawing attention to their disabilities. These are the exception. The norm are well-meaning people cracking a joke or making friends who help you feel like your disability isn't anything dehumanizing, but rather another foible of the human condition that makes you interesting. Fucking hell. Sorry about that, guys. I ran on a bit without even making a joke there. Um, she's stupid? Right! It'll have to do back to the mocking! Not only that, but these metaphors and references are extremely ignorant. Like, not even close to what those terms actually mean. Let's use, for example, the misuse of the word trigger. And so, now it's made fun of. It's taken less seriously. But, Triggers are a real thing, and if you're not a terrible person, you should probably respect that it happens. And do small things that you can do to be considerate. Damn it, Annie! I want to make a joke, but you're really triggering me here. Yes, trigger is a real clinical term that really gets used. Unfortunately, the term's been appropriated to describe the silliest things by kids on Tumblr with dyed hair and probably- Oh, wait a minute. You stole my word! See, I know trigger is a real clinical term because, as an epileptic, there are things that trigger my seizures. OCD people have triggers that kick their obsessions over to compulsive behaviors intended to relieve the psychological pressure of the obsessions. PTSD victims have flashbacks triggered by reminders of the events that first caused the trauma. However, in come the tumblerinas, and we've got people declaring themselves triggered by seeing a white guy with dreadlocks. Trigger. For hearing that science has shown magic probably doesn't exist. Triggered, cause Trump won the election. This is literally the very thing you're worried about happening with people hyperbolically or insultingly using names of disability. Except here, they genuinely believe the term applies instead of knowing they use the term with the intention to exaggerate or insult. Do you see the world of difference or are you blind? People with PTSD and other mental illnesses know very well that moving through the world is hard, that things come without warning. But if we can make things just a little bit safer by warning someone of content ahead, then why not? Ultimately, my point is, we need to constantly examine our actions, our language, our ableism if we want to evolve in that respect. Ultimately, these terms are taken less seriously as a result of appropriation and misuse. And it's a real shame that the things that can be so stigmatized and difficult to talk about in the first place are that much more difficult to talk about because people chose to do so. You know how to get rid of the stigma, Annie? You take the thing less seriously. You're fighting against yourself on this one. If a disabled person is getting bummed out over how other people use words, they're never going to be happy in life. Their best choice is to not give a shit what others are saying or doing because they can't control that. You'll never improve the world by shutting everyone up. I'm sorry, folks. I guess I just don't have it in me to be a smarmy cunt an entire video. Once again, I'd like to thank Drunken Uncle for letting me on his channel, and Kind Heathen for not responding to this challenge yet. I, I, I cheated and checked while writing this outro. If you've enjoyed my inanity, consider checking out my channel, Inane Dragon. 
You can, of course, follow me on various social medias, at Inane Dragon, and all the usual end content stuff you get in videos these days, where we wannabes pander for your approval. Good night, everyone.